Sorry for the better, because I handle that stuff, so I don't understand. So, um, okay, um, so without further ado, let me describe what I'm going to talk about. Um, So um, I want to discuss indeed, some issues related to how to think about gravitational anomaly in the context of finance final systems. I can you use the mic. Oh. I knew I So, um, okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, but first I'm going to review some issues related to quadratic quantum well, and how I will explain how to think about gravitational anomalies in the context of kind of planet systems and how this uh, helps to understand the uh, thermal Hall effect. But first I'm going to explain uh, the analogous issues in the, in the familiar case of visual uh, electric Hall effect and explain some difficulties. Well, I have something to do with I'm going to talk about you know, how the normal effect seems formally similar. In fact, it's quite, quite, quite a, bit, a bit of difference there, both you know, physically and mathematically. And I'll explain how to think about it, uh, these issues uh, using this block theorem and generalization. And uh, I'll turn on block theorem to generate requirements and then uh, find <coughs> Right hand side does depend on the choice of the edge, and you can also see that directly from 
number. Why is this, um, why is this, um, uh, first of all, well, some of this law is actually not correct. I'll explain the part which is correct and which is easy to explain. Maybe why is this central charge related to uh, the bulk quantity like A? Well, I think this strip of uh, material with the edges of the density 0 to 1, just like in the picture which I showed. edges are described by uh, a unitary CFT, then uh, we can actually compute the current just on a single anomaly so we'll imply that the energy current proportion which is squared So that's actually all well the result from the mid-80s by Cardi, Apte, uh, Fugel, and several people derived at the same time. So uh, then the net energy current proportion to the difference from the current the edges. So in the with the algebra, we can see that uh, indeed the current Linear in the sort of average temperature, and the coefficient is given by the difference of central charge. So that explains why I made this, why people believe that the uh, A here is the difference of chiral central charge. Oh, so the chiral central charge of the H. But the rest of the law is a bit problematic. First of all, when I say that, uh, uh, first of all, um, in what sense is that minus zero uh, or A related to rotational moment? So bulk and uh, less components cannot be like, coupled to, uh, to gravity in any natural way because there's no centric space on the tensor. So, uh, so it's, it's kind of hard to explain uh, uh, so why C left minus C right must be robust if, well, because it measures a normally with symmetry, which is not really a symmetry. So there's no different order of symmetry in the lattice. Similarly, Chern Simon's act, the Chern Simon's act, well, particularly this prescription, how to um, uh, uh, for de defining the spiral A or sigma or, or thermal organic conductance by uh, coupling to gravitational field and integrating out and getting Chern Simon signal still defined. There's no natural way to couple any reasonable components into a gravitational field. So this is an ill defined prescription. Unlike coupling to your one gauge field, which can't be done, this is not well defined. And second, this trans gravitational Chern Simon's action actually doesn't lead to thermal whole effect because it's second order in derivatives of metric and therefore second order in temperature, not first order. So this actually doesn't uh, reduce uh, thermal whole effect. Okay, so let's forget about that first. Maybe there's some way to make sense of this, but let's just, uh, what are the important questions? The important question is, why is, first of all, this um, gravitational, um, why is this kind of central charge independent of the edge? Uh, but the idea is like an edge quantity, because we believe that it's related to the bulk quantity, the thermal whole effect. Uh, so this makes sense. We might be able to argue that actually independent of the edge. And second, well, how do we argue that this quantity of that? Symmetry. So we 
some other arguments, you know. So and I'd like to answer these questions. Now let's go back to the one uh, There's an alternative explanation of all these things without using any proof theory or any anomalies based on Bloch's theorem. So uh, Bloch, Felix Bloch has this name of Bloch's theorem, the left name of Bloch's theorem, which says if you have a system of particles in equilibrium, which is sort of quasi one dimensional, it's like infinitely extended to one dimension, so finite in other dimensions, then the net current is actually zero. So um, that's uh, it's more general than Ohm's law. So it's sort of, it's sort of false, but it's more general. Now, um, well, granted, actually, actually, I haven't read a lot of paper because published in some obscure journal.
So, um, so in other words, it's a bulk property. Uh, moreover, um, uh, okay, so okay, it's a bulk quantity. Can you express in terms of uh, bulk correlators? So that's more complicated. Touch that. And uh, now let, let's go to apply the term all the time. First of all, we already know that uh, C right minus left is a relation to this condition A. And in the sense this is a bulk pro property, and also this is a bulk property. But now we can also argue that this A is actually dependent on the parameters of the Hamiltonian. Because if you vary them without posing the bulk energy gap, then nothing ch this doesn't change. Why is that? Well, again, consider a strip of material and consider a uh, bulk Hamiltonian.
explain the consequences. Um, and let me just say that uh, um, there are some interesting extensions. Well, there are some interesting extensions which allow you to compute constraints on uh, uh, if you do have currents, the way they can, the way they do depend on parameters. Saying that the standard charge could be determined by the bulk TQFT, right? That, that's what you got. By bulk components. But. By the bulk components. I'm not assuming there's TQFT there. Okay, so you know, that's really, you know, has to do with the uh, mod A, right? So we know from the TQFT you can get a standard charge mod A. Yeah. So you are thinking that the model A would be determined by the Hamiltonian. Well, if you assume there's TQFT, yes, we know that modular A is determined by the, the, the properties of anions. <laughs> But I'm not assuming that. So, and there's some number. You say yes, the Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian should give you that. The well, Hamiltonian definitely gives you an actual number. Yeah. And actually, there's a formula in our other paper. Is there a simple response function that the gravitational Schrödinger's term? Uh, well, it's some. Um, uh, I'm not sure. So. It's, some second derivative. Well, first of all, I'm sure it's well defined at all. As I say, coupling to gravity is ambiguous procedure. I'm sure you don't know what it means. But it's well defined by TQFT. Gravitational transcendence? It's well defined for systems which have enough uh, invariant, like enough symmetry on, on microscopically. Say, so it's just in, if it should maybe like a brilliant symmetry or something like that, some clean systems, it can make sense of this problem. But for lattices, I don't know how to make sense of that. I think it's just ambiguous quantity. Your, your proof in one day this absence of currents, like it doesn't generalize to higher dimensions? Well, the current is about, the net current only defined in sort of quasi one dimensional system. We have infinite extent in, uh, in one dimension and any, any extent in the perpendicular direction. Mm -hmm. So it's net current only defined when you have finite extent in, uh, in, uh, in all other dimensions. <coughs> it's really very about arbitrary dimensions. You define an energy current. I wonder whether correlation of that energy current can give you some gravitational current. I don't know how that makes sense again. Coupling to gravity is ambiguous. I'd like to avoid that. It's like getting to this very thorny question. Actually, that's why I quite ended up with this because I don't know how to make sense of like putting a, some kinematic system on a non-trivial spatial slide. Forget about non-trivial like space time. So. <laughs> Can you elaborate on this? What, what's the ob obstacle for this? What's the obstacle? Well, the obstacle why is it so hard to put it on curved space? There's no rotational variance either. So what? Well, there's no natural way, let's put it this way. So it's ambiguous how you, what you get. There's no symmetric stress energy tensor even in spatial sense. <coughs> Okay, two more question, quick questions. Uh, do your bulk correlators for kappa x will apply also to Kepler systems? Um, yeah, it is at, at non-zero temperature. You know, the formula applies to general temperature. Okay. Yeah, so it's just that uh, you need to have finite correlation length for this to make sense. Sure, finite temperature. Yeah. For the case with cold conductivity, uh, electric cold conductivity, yeah. um, can you? Can you maybe? I mean, I mean, I guess you assume existence of current, right? Suppose, suppose you have some symmetry that acts in a non, -non you want symmetry that acts in a non on side way or in some weird way. Can you can you say something in that case? How about the like, can you realize like, um, something with k right minus k left non zero by by making the symmetry act by the way? Yeah, or you can just uh, have it emerge uh, at long distances without any microscopic. You want it, it's basically the same thing. It doesn't matter if, if there's some. If there's some, actually, you can actually actually have non-zero energy current also in the same. If you have uh, no microscopic uh, time translational symmetry or no microscopic U1 symmetry, but it emerges long distances, then you can get all these non-zero currents, no problem. 
they, basically, when I have two anomalies of any kind at long distances, it means you cannot really have a microscopic conversion of this on, at one side. But if, as soon as you allow non on site or, or just emergent symmetry, then of course you can bring it. Let's <laughs> thank <laughs>